Hello everyone, this is Steve Palladino from Palladino Power Project uh, bringing you another video on the super power calculator um, and uh, discussing another functionality of the, uh, the calculator. Um, this time we're going to talk about uh, estimating your CP or FTP from a race effort. Um, a lot of people are doing uh, B races instead of a formal CP test. Um, so the, uh, the value here is that it allows you to calculate your CP, uh, FTP, uh, at least get a good estimate of it, um, using this calculator and your race data. Um, uh, and keep in mind that, that a lot of people are using, uh, um, modeled, uh, uh, derived CP or FTP estimates, such as Stride's Auto CP or WKO's um, uh, Power Duration Curve Modeled FTP or um, Golden Cheetah, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you want to be able to double check your model as well. So there's an added value here. You run a race, um, and you calculate your FTP CP from the race and uh, allows you to do a double check on what the model is producing. Um, a lot of times the, the model and the race values that we uh, get from the calculator, they're going to match up pretty close. They're usually within a 1% range, but sometimes they're, they're not. And then it's up to you to sort of you know, go in and try to figure out which one is uh, more valid um, and, uh, and why. Um, that's for another day. But let's talk about this uh, functionality here. Um, as uh, with all functionalities within this uh, uh, superpower calculator, you start up here in the, uh, on the main page, you start up, up here and determine what you want to do. In this case, We'll click that drop down box. What we want to do is we want to calculate FTP CP from uh, prior race power and time. You need both power, average power, and the, the time um, for that file. And you need to have some experience with ride wall exponent. So that's how you would do that. Now, what if you're not really sure about ride wall exponent? One thing you could do is, is come down here to this functionality and um, click calculate right exponent using up to 10 activities. So basically what you would do is you would uh, click on that and you come over to activities and you enter your activities and um, it will calculate a right exponent for you. Um, additionally, what we're talking about is a uh, building in sort of uh, a, uh, a table of you know if if you are in this sort of time range for a 10k or this time range for a half marathon, um, this is your your right exponent that you probably should work with as the centerpiece for uh, around which you bracket uh, other right exponents. Uh, so we're, that's coming. We're working on it. Uh, so there'll be a couple ways of, of fine tuning your your personal right right exponent. We're getting a better idea than just random guessing if you don't have a lot of experience with it. Um, so that, that little tangent aside, let's go back to our, our original um, direction of this. So we're going to uh, calculate FTP and anaerobic work capacity. That's not necessary in this case, but we're going to have to get it uh, from your race power, average power, and your, your time and a Rigel exponent. Now, um, notice that uh, up here in the key, yellow is the required uh, elements. Notice that when I clicked on this, then we had a couple of yellow spots um, pop up, and that's your race power and your race time. Um, the uh, blue are optional, and in this case, um, uh, what happens is is the the um, the the uh, model will default 
to a standard rival exponent, my suggestion is that you should enter your rival exponent, your best guess rival exponent here. So um, um, if you don't put it in, it's going to give you a default value, which may or may not be um, true to you. So um, you want to put in race power, race time, rival exponent. So for this, this particular runner, uh, did a race um, and averaged 237 watts for 36 minutes. I put that data in ahead of time. Um, the athlete usually for a 10K has a rival exponent between uh, um, minus 0 0.04 to minus 0 0.05. Um, that's for a 10K. Uh, keep in mind that if a half marathon is longer, so the fatigue factor is a bigger issue, the rival exponent is, is more negative. Same thing for a marathon. It's, it's unusual to see for an athlete that the same rival uh, exponent applies across multiple um, uh, race durations. So uh, let's look at uh, those values here with a, my, a rival exponent of minus 0 0.05. Scroll down. Um, you can do uh, uh, adjustments to altitude, temperature, humidity. I'm not doing that. So er everything they're from and to are, are the same in this case. So let's scroll down to green, which is the result. And we have um, a, an estimate for FTP or CP of 233 watts. Um, and if we go back here, we're just going to bracket a little bit. Uh, minus 4, we get 234 watts. And uh, I know minus 0 0.06 is not um, proper, and we get 232 watts. Um, so around 233 to 234 watts uh, from this. Um, for this athlete, uh, WKL4, after adding the race uh, data, updated to 233 plus or minus 0 0.7 watts is the estimate. So there's a check there, it, it, and it's pretty close. So now we know that the, the model is, is uh, loaded pretty well and giving us a good data, um, and um, we can use this as the double check. Um, so there you have it, uh, how to get an FTP CP estimate from uh, your race power and duration and a little bit of playing around with rival exponent. Um, and th there you go. You get your estimate, which can be what you actually use uh, for uh, planning your targets, your training targets, or it uses a double check. Um, thank you very much. See you on the next one.